Hey YouTube, Gearsu here. Today for you guys, I'm going to be showing you uh, another retro deck profile. Uh, I had some comments on the ones that I made, and you guys seem to like them, so um, I'm going to keep pumping them out for you guys. I actually prefer um, older formats anyway when I'm playing casually with my friends. Um, so again, this is uh, another older deck, not too old, but uh, it's always nice to show the legacy of uh, how certain decks have uh, evolved. Um, in this case, it's going to be uh, Guard Dragon and Dimion. Um, this, in my opinion, was a little bit better way to play the deck versus um, people would either play it pure or uh, just with magicians or something like that. But um, I always preferred that uh, adding the guard dragons in there was just because, uh, I mean, Agrippine wasn't banned yet. So, I mean, if you weren't playing it and you could make it, uh, you know, you were, in my opinion, you were just playing the deck wrong. So, but um, this is a template. Um, for anybody who wants to play older formats or maybe experience older decks or just view the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, so this is for you guys. Anyways, um, we'll get started here with the main deck. <clears throat> so for the main deck, we're going to play two of the Mighty Master of Magic. Basically, uh, this guy is your relatively like Dragoonish kind of card in this deck. Um, semi. Uh, you don't really want to play three of him because he can kind of brick, uh, especially like in your opening hand. Um, I've noticed you really kind of want to just special him from the deck with cards like uh, Servant of Endymion. Um, I just feel like that's kind of how you get a better value out of him. Um, going second, this card is like absolutely nuts um, because its pendulum scale effect says that you can remove six spell counters from your field and uh, special summon him from the scale and then count the number of cards you control that can hold spell counters. They don't even need to have spell counters on them. Um, but for instance, like uh, Magical Library, if that was a monster on your field, when you summoned him with a scale effect, you could pop two cards, because you can hold spell counters on two cards you control. So as you can tell, this is a really, really busted card going second. Um, and then it's monster effect. Um, it, it, one more thing about the scale effect is it's all one effect, too. So anything that is unaffected by monster effects or whatever, or can't be, uh, yeah, unaffected by monster effects, whatever, you know, this card is a spell effect. Um, so outs, really good, really good things. Um, so yeah, definitely two. I would maybe play three if, uh, you know, the deck was a little less consistent. But the reason that this is only at two is because it's really, really easy to access this card. You're not going to have any trouble getting to him, I promise you that. So definitely two Mighty Master of Magic for sure. And the next monster we're going to play is one uh, Mythical Piece Jackal King. The reason you only play one of this card um, and you're not playing his uh, Master Cerberus counterpart to search him out is because um, this card is a scale 4, so its only purpose, honestly, is to be either sent off Electrum uh, or Special Summon off of uh, your Servant of Endymion. Um, you honestly do not want to see this card in your hand. It's a 6. It's a scale 4. It literally doesn't synergize with the deck whatsoever. The only other interaction you have with this card is the fact that it's a dark spellcaster. So if somehow you use it for Xyz material or it goes to the graveyard and it gets striked from a pendulum summon, you'll be able to bring this card back with another card in the deck that I'll show you later. Um, so, but yeah, definitely one of this card. If you would like to play the master uh, to search this card out, I would play it at 2. Now would put your deck to 42 because this is a 40 card deck. But uh, if you want my opinion and you want to be most consistent as possible, I would only play one Jackal King. Uh, beautiful art, by the way. Let me just appreciate that for a second there. Good looking card. So, for the reason you play the deck, to be honest, um, is this, this girl right here, Servant of Endymion. This card is nuts. Um, this was the reason why the deck was so playable um, <clears throat> after the Megatons came out uh, and after Nibiru came out. The only thing that really stopped this deck was Dark Ruler no more, which, I mean, obviously, totally stops the deck's combo and tracks, but um, with Servant of Endymion, basically, its scale effect, which is more or less the only thing you're going to be using, pardon me, skates that um, each time a spell card is activated, uh, place a spell counter on this card when the spell resolves, okay? So, you get three spell counters on this card, you can remove three of them, Special summon this card from your pendulum zone and one monster from your deck with a thousand or more attack that you could place a spell counter on. And if you do, place a spell counter on each. So you put her in the scale, you activate three spells, special summon her, and nine times out of ten, going first, you're going to special summon Jackal King from your deck. 
So he's going to have one counter, and she's going to have one counter, so this effect is already going to be live. This stops you from getting to Beirut. If you know your matchup, though, and you're playing against, say, a Trap Heavy deck, that's when you would summon him from your deck. Not only can he not be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects, um, he also can negate the effects of spell and trap cards by bouncing another card you control to the hand with spell counters. Granted, it has to successfully bounce to your hand for you to negate. So nowadays, you cannot bounce cards like Selene to your hand to negate things because it has to go to your hand in order to negate. Uh, but yeah, I think I forgot to mention that with Muddy Master. It can't be targeted or destroyed and negate spells or traps, but yeah. So nowadays, you use her to bring out whatever uh, suitable boss monster from your deck is for your matchup. Nine times out of ten, though, you're probably going to summon Jackal King. Just letting you know. <clears throat> and for the last of the spell counter cards, we just play one Magical Abductor. The reason we play this card is because you need to open Servant of Endymion. You play six of them with another spell card in the deck. But for some strange reason, you don't open. You can put Magical Abductor in the scale, and you could still get a plus one when you activate three spell cards. Would not play this card at three. Not in this version of the deck. Nowadays, this is a mandatory three of, End of Endymion because um, Servant is at one. So, understandable, but definitely the one of this. You can also special summon it from the deck with a Servant of Endymion as a fourth target if you draw one of your three targets for her to special summon from the deck because she cannot special herself. She does not have more than a thousand attack, so. And you can only special summon Servant of Endymion once per turn. Um, so, I probably should mention that, that if this card is in your scale and you activate the effect of special summoning it and another monster from your deck and they Ash Blossom you, just because uh, you haven't successfully special summoned this, in North America, it's ruled that since you attempted to special summon this card, you're actually not allowed to try to special summon it again. So, uh, fun little fact there. Not very fun, but it's a fact. <clears throat> um, now, for the Guard Dragon part of the deck, we play Triple Dark Worm. The card's kind of nuts. Um, in this deck, especially with uh, Electromite as a card, because if you can manage to get this card to the graveyard with several cards in the deck... Um, you can special summon it if you control no monsters, and then on special or normal, it is a uh, plus one. Um, sorry, I bumped the camera there, but it, it's a plus one. Um, it searches you your gate zero. Um, basically, this card is a brick. You do not ever want to see this card in your hand. I mean, all it is is a scale zero. It's a seven, so it can come up sometimes. There is monsters in the extra deck. There is rank sevens that you can make, absolute dragon and stuff like that. Um, but in my opinion, uh, you never want to see this card. You only want to search it, and that's it. Um, the scale effects of these cards never come up. Uh, Dark Worm is just a dragon, a level 4 or lower dragon monster. That is a pendulum monster, so that enables your guard dragon place. Literally, uh, Dark Worm is full combo. <clears throat> Next, to play some extenders, because uh, Electromite is at 1, so you kind of want to do what pendulum decks want to do in Master Rule 4. Um, you want to make Electrum before you pendulum summon, otherwise, uh, yeah, your pendulum summon is going to be kind of lackluster, and your play is going to be lackluster. Hand advantage is also going to be hindered because you don't get that draw, but that's why you play Triple Chronograph Sorcerer and you put him in the scale, and then you can just summon Time Gazer from the deck. Unfortunately, Astrograph Sorcerer was never allowed uh, at the same time as this deck was out. Thank God, that would be pretty busted. Um, but yeah, so anyways, that's what this guy's for. Also, the other two are not bricks after late game, after you get this guy out of the deck. You have ways to put this guy back in the deck with uh, an extra deck monster that you do use, probably you already know, Vortex Dragon. When he's in the extra monster zone, or in the extra deck face up, you, I usually shuffle him back, uh, or any of the bricks back, like him or gate zero back, with vortex, just so these cards are never really too bricky. Um, but if you have him in your hand, um, his effect is special summon himself and another monster from your hand if a card you control is destroyed does come up. Um, so you gotta give Chrono more uh, credit than that. He's definitely just as good as Astrograph Sorcerer in this deck. Uh, as far as like extending purposes, obviously he doesn't search, which is kind of poop, but... You know, what are you going to do about it? But yeah, definitely cri Triple Chrono. You can also make Zark with him too, but uh, I don't think you're making Zark in this deck. As I said, you really want to make Electrum before you Pendulum Summon, so uh, play Curtain Razor. In this deck, he's actually kind of super good because um, this deck kind of lacks sometimes when it comes to main deck monsters that, uh, you know, can extend. So you put him in the scale, and if you control no monsters, you can just Special Summon him for free. He's also a level 4. So if you really truly brick uh, and you have a four in your hand, like a Dark Worm or something, you can normal summon him, you can normal summon the Dark Worm, get your plus, and then you can go into like a Tornado Dragon, pop a back row. He's got many utilities, but uh, I don't play Tornado Dragon in this deck. If he's the only monster you control, also he doubles his attack. So yeah, 22 beat sticks, really good for getting over cards that uh, you just need to out really quick. But uh, his scale effect is once per duel, so take that into consideration. 
yes, it's kind of bricky after you draw the first two, but they're, you know, they're level fours and uh, they're dark, so you could banish them with another card in this deck. So you'll see the ratios. Anyways, so triple uh, Magic Specter Raccoon Bunbaku. The reason I play this card is because Joker's banned, and this card really needs hand advantage in order to keep up. Um, he can search himself on summon, so basically you just normal summon him, search himself every turn. You can shuffle the same copies of him back in the deck with your Vortex Dragon, and also the fact that he is a level 3 uh, level three wind monster also comes into play. doesn't hurt that he's a spellcaster either. He is a scale 5, which uh, is actually kind of good, um, because if you have a low scale, you're still able to access your 4s. Uh, and make your, you know, with your pendulum summon like that if you really need a scale. <clears throat> but you're probably going to normal summon him with your extender to get a plus and go into Electromite. Nine times out of ten. Now for the last monsters in the deck, we do play the Magician Package. Um, I feel like I had about six or seven slots in the deck that I could have filled with other things. But I feel like the power of the Magician Engine in any pendulum deck should always be respected. Uh, Harmonizing Magician is literally, like, still busted to this day. You just summon her and you get another one from the deck. I mean, it's kind of kind of nuts. It can involve some bricks, though. Um, and, and nowadays, the Magician monsters are kind of bricks. Because you don't have access to just destroying them and bringing them back from your extra deck uh, for free. Now you kind of have to work for your Pendulum Summon. So I feel like uh, the Endymion cards nowadays are better than the Magicians. Kind of hate to say that because Magicians are still my favorite uh, Pendulum archetype-ish thing. I guess you can call them an archetype. But unfortunately in this deck you can only play them as an engine. But it is a very good engine. So two Harmonizing. Also a high skill. And then you just play one Perp and one uh, Black. Basically these are just your targets for Harmonizing. They do have utility purposes. These are the best two utility ones you're allowed to play. Because you couldn't play Double Iris yet. It was not unbanned. Um, he pops a card, boosts your dark spellcasters, you can go for OTKs with this card, also a low scale, and then he, um, he can half your opponent's guys, and he can also, uh, revive your dark spellcasters when he's destroyed. Also, he's a high scale. So, like, this is the card I was talking about earlier, you can bring back your Jackal King. Um, so you put him in the scale, you half your opponent's monster, he gets destroyed, then you use his second effect to bring back a dark spellcaster from your grave, so, pretty good. Alright, let's get to the spell cards, probably the most important important part of the deck. Um, spell Power Mastery, this is the best spell card in the deck. Um, late game, this card's fucking bonkers. Um, so basically if you open this with Servant, this is full combo, uh, and Demion wise <clears throat> and uh, everything wise, if they can't stop your Electrum. So basically, you put Servant in scale, you activate this, what this card does, you add an Demion card from your deck to your hand. And then you count the number of cards... Uh, the number of spell power mastery or spell power grasp you control and or have in your graveyard then you could distribute that many spell counters upon cards you control so let's say you have one in your graveyard that's that's in your graveyard and you activate another one you have a servant on the field servant's gonna your servant's gonna get one spell counter from you activating spell power mastery on resolution spell power mastery is also going to give you a search and put two more counters on Servant to summon from your deck. So this card is definitely the bread and butter. Um, when the deck got hit, I honestly, not going to lie, kind of thought this card was going to get hit more than Servant. Um, but uh, I guess Servant was the was the better one. So, But this card just makes the deck go around. You can also search uh, Big Daddy and Demion with this, and you could search the Field Spell. So the card is definitely very versatile for sure. Even only having one, like opening it turn zero, you still are able to distribute a spell counter to something for free so and then whatever is on your field already is already gonna gain naturally another spell counter from you activating a spell so it's automatically two spell counters on any spell counter holder so it's a very good card yeah anyways guard dragon things um you need 1000 percent to see dark worm on your first turn or you're not gonna do guard dragon things so even if you draw two of these even if you draw three of these, as long as the other two cards, as long as the other one card, at least in your hand, is a monster, it's full combo. These cards would not even matter in your hand as long as you opened Dragon Shrine. Um, so basically, you send Dark One to the grave and special summon him, and then you just normal summon the level four or lower monster that you can normal summon. Um, and that goes into Electromite. Um, and then... You know, I mean, you would have to, you know, the, if you open three, these, the other thing in your hand would probably have to be 
a scale. Any scale, though, doesn't have to be, because you have to pop something with Electrum, so... Yeah, um, I, you maybe could do like this, um, but I, I think this is better because, as I said before, it's a spell card, so it synergizes with Servant. Why wouldn't you want to open it? It's a spell. And then two, why wouldn't you not want to dark, dump Dark Worm to the graveyard? It's kind of busted. Um, so, yeah, definitely four of these. I mean, if you statistically don't see one of these in your opening hand, unfortunately, that just sucks. So, But mathematically, there's no reason why you shouldn't open at least, honestly, two one or two of those you really only want to open one obviously but you know anyways so we're gonna get into some more good spell cards triple allure of darkness pretty sure you have like 15 or something dark monsters in the deck so um this card's never really dead i don't like into the void over this card i remember triff was playing into the void um the real only reason i don't like that is because you do have to end with some cards in your hand sometimes and i don't want to discard them to the graveyard um so unfortunately Allure of Darkness, in my opinion, is better. If you want to play Into the Void, you can, but top decking Allure of Darkness late game is way better than top decking Into the Void. So, your choice on that one if you choose to play it. That's up to you. And the last couple draw cards, we play Double Pot of Desires and one Upstart Goblin. Definitely not Triple Desires in this deck. Uh, you're not, you don't ever really want to resolve two. Um, you actually want to banish the other one off the first one, but usually for me it never works out that way. Like, if you banish these two cards off of your desires, um, you technically only paid eight because you don't even care to see these cards anyway. Um, but Upstart's kind of mandatory in this deck. It's literally a free spell. It doesn't even matter if you're playing 42 cards in your deck. It's not in your deck to make it a 39-card deck. It's in your deck because it's a free spell. Um, so, yeah, definitely pretty self-explanatory with these cards. Don't think I need to explain them any further. Last two cards in the deck is Pendulum Call and Duelist Alliance. I 1,000% would not recommend playing this card at 2. Um, you either want to open this card or this card. If you open this card, this card's dead. Yes, I understand that. Um, but if you open both of these, this is the reason my logic -ing. So you open both these cards, you just activate this and pitch the, other, pitch the other dead card. But if you open this card, this is really the card you want to open, honestly. Because if you have Servant, this is two counters for free. Because you activate this, get this, and then activate this. So, By the way, if you activate Pendulum, Call, and Dark Worm, it's like Exodia. Because, um, yeah, I mean, you guys probably already know this shit by now. It's, it's, it's basic things, but let's say, uh, let's say these were the only two cards in your hand. You activate this, pitch the Dark Worm to the graveyard, and then you get, um, yeah, whatever. You just get your two Magicians, and then these are in your hand. So you already have the two cards back in your hand that you used, and then the Dark Worm's going to special summon himself. And then he's going to give you the third card in your hand. So it's basically the Pot of Greed in the deck. Um, really powerful play to open. So, Anyways, that's the main deck. Um, it's 40 cards exactly. So you could probably one squeeze one or two in there. As I said, if you wanted to play the Master Cerberus engine, feel free. Those two slots are kind of uh, open to you. Or maybe you want to play like Double Ash or something. Or maybe even Triple and put it up to 43. Take the Upstart Goblin and take it down to 42 again. Whatever you want to do. So, But that's the main deck. Um, so on to the extra deck. Um, we're going to play your, your big fours. Your links. Um, play Borlode Dragon and Saryuja. Borlode was like the best out to anything that can't be targeted or destroyed back in the day. Um, I'm pretty sure... Uh, yeah, no, Sword was definitely out. Um, but in my opinion, I always like Borload better. Sword is good for killing games, but this is good for killing your opponent's board. Um, so this is really good. You can also special summon this card off your Guard Dragon plays. If you have a uh, insane hand, you'll be able to get you'll be able to get your Vortex on the field without um, what are they called? Without the Guard Dragons. So then you special this with Agrippine instead, and this still cannot be targeted by monster effects. It lowers all your opponent's shit, and if they don't deal with it on their turn, you're on your turn you just snatch steal something. So and it's so when you're summoning him, he's going to give you two more zones to Pendulum Summon, too. So, honestly, he's not the worst. And then Saryuja is just, like, um, the arrows are really good. It's a dragon if you're locked into your dragons with your guard dragon plays because they hand-trapped you or something. Um, so this is really good to go into. So these are your fours you play. Um, I wouldn't play any different ones in this deck, to be honest. Now we're going to go into your threes. I'm going to play Zephyr Metaltron and Triple Burst Dragon. People really don't play this card too much, but uh, it, it, it's arrows are really the only reason I play it. It's a little hard to make sometimes, 
because it needs two plus monsters special from the extra deck. But uh, it's it's not even the hardest task in the world in this deck to get, but it sometimes can be a little challenging. Triple Burst Dragon is in there because it's a three that points down, and it's generic and gets you out of your LB lock um, and your Agrapane lock. Um, so that's literally the only reason you play this card. It actually does have some applications sometimes uh, during the damage step. It can... Uh, it can inflict piercing damage, and it also can negate a spell trap card or monster effect during the damage stuff. Card was actually really good for dealing with Ray back when Sky Strikers were a deck. Um, so, yeah, basically, these are the only threes you can make this a deco talker, honestly, if you really wanted to. So, or any three, or anything, <laughs> anything you want to play. And so now we'll get to the big daddy himself. He deserves his own spotlight right here. Electrum, this card was limited to one. Um, I mean, I understand why this card is banned. It just makes every Pendulum deck play the same, basically. Uh, so I kind of get that. But at the same time, when they ban the card, you kind of just killed the entire mechanic. Uh, because, yeah, it was, like, the only thing that Pendulum did. But at the same time, like, they needed this card because of how they neutered Pendulum summoning. So, but anyways, beggars can't be choosers. The card's been banned for a while, so if you don't know what it does... Requires two Pendulum Monsters to summon, and if it's Link Summoned, you can add a Pendulum Monster from your deck to your extra deck face-up. Pretty good. Once per turn, you can target a face-up card you control. Another face-up card you control. You can't target himself. Uh, destroy it, then add a face-up Pendulum Monster from your extra deck to your hand. So, in a nutshell, this thing puts any Pendulum Monster from your deck to the extra deck, and then puts it in your hand. Oh, and by the way, if a card in your Pendulum Zone leaves the field, you mandatory have to draw a card. Not that you wouldn't want to anyway. So, But you can't chain block with the draw effect. That's why it's mandatory. So it always has to be chain link one unless you're chaining it to something else that's mandatory. Two down pointing arrows. Insane artwork. Easy to make. I mean, what can you ask for? I mean, this card was fine at one, in my opinion. Um, but uh, I understand why they don't want it. So, yeah. And to people who think it's going to come back, honestly, it's not. So, sorry. Last two. Uh, next two generic fours. Or generic twos we got. These cards are literally only in there because Pendulum Summoning sucks uh, in Master Rule 4. So you really need those arrows to allow you to get cheese out your extra deck. And this guy is good for making your small guys big and getting over big monsters. Uh, I still like playing this card uh, under Clock Taker. And B-Cop is just generic. So it could come up with its dark monster effect to protect something from being destroyed. Like your Jackal King or something like that. But you're not going to do that. So it's a waste. All right, last of the link monsters are what makes the guard dragon engine work. Um, so basically, LP is, I don't know, it's still unbanned for some reason, like to this day, but this thing is nuts. You just special summon any dragon monster from your deck. No restrictions to the side that you just have to summon it to a zone that two link monsters are pointing to. That's it. So that's pretty busted. And his counterpart in, in crime is uh, Agrapane. Not, uh, uh, Agrapane, yeah, I've always mispronounced it. Yeah, Agrapane. Yeah, so basically what he does is uh, he's just your ultimate Zulkin in Link Monster form. He just lets you summon any dragon from your extra deck. So, I mean, okay, that's fine. As long as it summons to suit two zones you point to. Seems a little weird because they're arrows. You're like, oh, how am I going to get the zones to work up because I got shit like this going like that. But I will show you guys a small little combo video at the end. Um, or a small little combo at the end. Which will, uh, you know, kind of explain how the deck works. But anyways, and then Heretic Seal is just your ender. Oh, this card's fucking nuts, even to this day. Non-target bouncing. This thing outs Dragoon, outs anything. Um, so yeah, and then he brings another dragon out from the deck if you want to. This card's tribute special. Yeah, no, it's actually mandatory. Okay, but yeah, yeah. So you just get another dragon from your deck. But yeah, these are the Trinity. Um, you have to play these three cards for the Guard Dragon Engine. So, no exceptions. Um, so one, get one from deck, get one from extra deck, and then ender right there so that's it for the links uh, and you play the one uh the one vortex dragon you have to play this card it's the best thing to special summon off Agrapane. um basically it's just an omni negate i don't think i've ever even played a pendulum deck where i haven't played this card it's just the best the best thing to cheat out you can cheat it out by making two sevens and linking them away and special summoning it or cheat it out with Agrapane. there's two ways to get it out he recycles your bricks, puts them back in the deck to search again. So I guess kind of that sentence was a little weird to say, but you just put anything back in your deck. So you can recycle your harmonizings, your uh, targets for harmonizing, your cards to summon off servant. 
Um, so really, really good. Definitely wouldn't play him over uh, Hot Red Dragon Abyss is what people played that weren't playing Pendulum. Um, but, you know, you could play Hot Dragon Abyss too if you want. Once, one Synchro Monster, we just play Omega because uh, Harmonizing. You can still make this card pretty easy. Ripping cards from hand is pretty good. So in Simplified Game States, Omega is, in my opinion, the best uh, 8 to play in this deck. Um, and then the last is the Xyz Monsters. We just play kind of some options, I guess you can call them. Uh, Absolute is if you have a really busted hand, um, you can make two sevens and link them away from Vortex and then use your Guard Dragon place to get your Boar Load on the field. So you have something that can't be targeted and you have a negate and probably something else negate-wise. Um, but, and then, uh, Narito, you can make him with two Chronograph Sorcerers, you can even make him with two Jackal Kings, I w and then bring the Jackal King back from the Graveyard with Black Fang Magician's Scale Effect, but he's also another Negate, but he only negates Spells and Traps, which is not the worst, because, uh, your, your opponent's monster effects aren't really gonna be bothering you, uh, it's, it's like, cards like Twin Twisters, Cosmic Cyclone, Dark Ruler No More, not that you could respond with this with Dark Ruler No More, but cards like that are really, really shit on Pendulum. Um, so monster effects you can more or less deal with, but uh, spell and traps like Twin Twisters and anything to disrupt your scales really is kind of the worst. Um, and then Totem Bird. Uh, the synergy with this card is the fact that you play Bunbaku. Bunbaku and also Servant is a level 3 wind monster. This also negates spells and traps too. Pretty big beat stick. I think it loses attack though if it's like got no material. Yeah, it loses like 300 attack or whatever. Um, but yeah, so this is a really card, good card to make in simplified game states as well. You can just normal summon your Bunbaku. Get your search of your other Bunbaku, Pendulum summon the Bunbaku from your hand, and then make this guy, so. Really good, I wouldn't play the deck without it, honestly, even back in the day I played him, because I like playing little tap cards like that. So anyways, that's the full deck. I guess I'll show you guys, um, combo here. So, bear with me, I'm kind of limited on space, just with the camera, so... Let's say you open um, Spell Power Mastery, Servant of Endymion, and literally any monster to normal summon. So we're just gonna, yeah, we'll get a brick. We'll get, there's a black thing to our hand. Okay, so. Basically, you're going to put Servant in the scale. I don't think I have dice near me to indicate the uh, counters, but you'll be able to tell in the video. So you're going to activate your Spell Power Mastery. That's going to give you your Mighty Master of Magic. Um, so that's going to put also one Spell Counter on Servant. And then on Resolution... Uh, Servant is going to get another counter, so she's going to be at two. You're going to activate your big guy in the scale. It's going to put her to three. You're going to use her effect, special summon herself. And... As I said, I usually bring out the Jackal King, so they have one spell counter on each. So you're already protected by Nib. So they cannot Nib you. You're going to normal summon. Um, you one of these. You're going to Link. You're going to go into uh, your Electrum. Electrum's effect is going to activate. That is going to give you access to um, your Dark Worm. So I'm going to put Dark Worm uh, over here in your extra deck. Uh, then at this point... You're probably going to want to, um, okay, so, I mean, yeah, it's kind of like a three-card combo then, I guess. So you're just going to want to, uh, have anything that you can put in your scale, anything. It's Pendulum Dagger, you're going to open something you're going to put in your scale. So, put something in your scale here, you kind of want to keep this guy in your scale. So, you put this guy here, um, pop it, and then you add your Dark Worm to your hand, and then off that, you're going to draw a card off Electrum. So you have two cards back in your hand. Um, now, actually, instead of adding the Dark Worm, I'm sorry, you have to add the uh, the low skill. I'm dumb. It's been a minute since I played this deck. I'm sorry, guys. Um, so you add the back to your hand, then you draw a card. 
<clears throat> then you put this back in the scale and now you're going to pendulum summon this and this and Dark Worm is going to give you a search for your gate zero. Uh, now remember, this whole thing, you're nib proof. They cannot nibiru you. Um, so take into consideration that too. So you got that in your hand, so you're going to link this away. And you're going to go into your LP. This is why it's really important that you have an extra monster to pendulum summon. Um, because you need any extra body, any effect monster to link away with a, uh, your Electromite. Electromite goes to the grave. Because you need your arrows to line up and you need to, to be the link three. So you're going to put your triple burst dragon there. Um, since you have two zones pointing to the same place, um, you're going to be able to special summon a dragon from your deck. Um, you can play other targets, but I just played the Dark Worms. Like I said, consistency is key in this deck. You just get the free body for link material. That's it. And it's just how it works. So you link those away. Again, you can play another target if you'd like. Odd Eyes or anything in the main deck. Then you're going to make your dragon. Again, right here you're locked into dragon sleep and only summon dragons while he's on the field. So now you're going to use Agrapane's effect. Summon a dragon from your extra deck. Bam. That's Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon for free. Was not properly summoned, so once it's dead, it's dead for the game, just letting you know. You cannot bring it back with cards like Monster Reborn or anything. Um... Now, since you're locked in dragons, you're going to take your two dragons and link them away. And you're going to go into Heretic Seal of Heavenly Spheres. So, basically, off the... Yeah, I know you needed a monster to normal summon and you needed a card to put in your scale. I understand that, but that's just Pendulum. You're going to have a monster to normal summon and you're definitely going to have at least something to put in your scale. Um, so then, yeah. So basically, the... the, the Three, three and a half card combo uh, ends you on this board. And there's a million ways to get those cards in your hand. So, uh, again, you can open cards like Dragon Shrine uh, to be your extender. Stuff like that is Dragon Shrine instead of uh, the Mastery. And you can still end basically the same way. Um, so, a Monster Effect Negate, an Omni Negate, and a Non Targeting Bounce. And uh, next turn, you have Scale Setup and everything. So, yeah, that's the combo, guys. Leave a like. Leave a comment, leave a subscription on the channel. Be much appreciated, guys. Um, we have a tournament that we're filming right now, and I'm um, getting the commentary done for all those matches, which will be uploaded probably within the next week. Um, so just start pumping out more content again. So thank you guys for watching. Um, and let me know down below what other decks you want to see. I have a whole bunch of decks that I could build. My friends have decks too that they want to showcase. So we got a bunch of videos planned. Thanks for watching, guys. Gearsu out.